down the drum figure to form Hi everyone, this is the summer of 2009. It doesn't look like a summer, however, we spent two months here writing our dissertation in the Quinn School of Business. So we wanted to make it a memorable moment, so I'm going to introduce it to a process. Let's check this out. Now stop this record for a while and practice producing a good sound. The preponderance of students who come here, they either haven't done a dissertation before mm. or their dissertation experience hasn't been particularly positive. So what we've done is we've designed a, a learning journey for people so that they can be ready by June for the dissertation experience. Okay. We're teaching you a foreign language mm. and the first steps is research methods. Then in the second term, we give you this course in Contemporary Issues and Strategy Research, okay. which is quite different to all the other courses you would have had. Okay. There are pretty much no slides. Okay. You've got four articles that you read a week, and the rule is that they must have been from the last 10 years of strategy research from the top leading journals. And you read those, and it's like total immersion in the language. At first, you're completely confused. You took your basic French in Ireland, and you arrived in Paris. You took your basic research methods, and now you're at Raven Research Lab. And every week the students have to run one section of the class themselves, which is about mm -hmm. what's the core research question, what's the theory, how would they explain cause and effect, what's the design, how, how are they going to test that, and what are their findings. The main assignment that you have in that course is an individual assignment where you uh, design a research proposal. Okay. And that then gives you the tools to think, what do I really want to research this summer? But outside the course, you're also looking at the research interests on the website okay. of the other faculty members. You're hearing what they're saying in class. And that's giving you an idea of, to whom would I direct this proposal? Now, doing a dissertation is a personal journey as well. Some supervisors you personally engage with, Others you don't, mm. uh, and it won't be the same person for everyone. So okay. it, it gives you, over the term, a chance to see who could I work with best. Um, and then the styles of those supervisors are radically different. Mm. Some would say, look, Nancy, off you go. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen your proposal. I'll meet you three times. See you at the end of term. That works for some people. For others, it's disastrous. Another form of supervision, that, the type, for example, that I do, is you work on a research project that I'm actually doing with other faculty members here in the school, mm -hmm. as well as PhD students. And master students, generation on generation, pass the work over to the next generation. Okay. So it enables a very large-scale project to be done where you can really play around with fun, exciting ideas in a group. So we'd have a team between two and sometimes as many as 10 working on these. They'll each be writing up something individual, but they'll be working together. So over the summer, yeah. you work as a team with me and with the other faculty here. You move down to the Quinn School, you're in there every day, and it gives you a chance to see a very different world. It's a working world, um, and a chance to truly stand on the shoulders of giants. The previous generation gave you the data set, you contribute onwards. So by the end of that, you should be able to write something that's not a long way away from the papers that you've actually read. So that's kind of exciting.
the other question would be, what would you expect from the students who will choose to work on this research project during the summer? Okay, I, th I think that's an important point because you need to think about what are the expectations that, that the faculty member has. And in some ways, the more you put in, the more you can expect from the faculty mm -hmm. member. My expectations are quite rigid. Uh, I expect that the team regularly comes here to the Quinn School where my office is, so they've got to move from the Black Rock School, and that they work together as a team. Mm -hmm. I'm grading for the whole term. So for the whole term, I'm meeting them several times a week, understanding what their work contribution is. So I need to see what's your effort in the team, but I also need to see what's your intellectual contribution. How are you contributing? So my grading process is a blend of your continuous assessment and your final written element. I would view my summer students as co-researchers, so I'm expecting them to make contributions to the research project. Yeah. Say, look, Peter, here's where we got to go. And, and for a true dialogue to occur. So in the summer, that's a space where I would get to know that student's capabilities in a way much more deep than in a class of 45 people. The great advantage of that is that when I write you a reference, I know you. Mm -hmm. So I know what your working habits are like. I can speak to the things that a reference wants. I think in some ways my personal experience mirrors what's happening now. I came out of the last deep recession uh, in the late 1980s uh, where very few people were getting work immediately. Um, and some of the things that people need is to have realistic um, short-term, medium-term and long-term aspirations. Uh, and sometimes students can pitch themselves too highly in their aspirations and expectations in particular given that we've moved from an environment where for the last few years getting work was not a difficult process. Multiple offers were used and employers would trade work against each other. Today securing that one is important and I think some of the things that are uh, important to consider are the basics. That hard work pays and therefore there are a lot of things you got to do. I remember when I was just uh, in my first job getting very familiar with the photocopier. It's just something that has to be done. And expecting I was this great strategist, uh, it's not realistic. I, I think the second thing is that you have to exhibit something that's particular to you. So, for example, as a strategy student, what you come to know is how to analyze a company and understand what is its business model, what's its customer proposition, what's its economic logic, what are the resources and capabilities necessary for it to succeed? And in an interview situation and on into your work to demonstrate a deep understanding of that organization and a commitment to that organization sets you apart. Well, being courteous, being modest, that's a good idea. Uh, remember, as you're going up, the people you annoy are the very people you meet on the way back down. And your career ebbs and flows. And sometimes that's forgotten by people. What is the most important characteristic that a professional strategist should have? Attention to detail, but an ability using some simple tools to separate out the wheat from the chaff. Understanding the detail, what is the one issue that could most destroy this organization? Uh, and really understanding that. And again, I think it comes back to a simple business model. Understanding your customer fundamentally understanding how you extract value from that customer and understanding the processes by which you deliver value. Those three very simple things. If you understand those things, your organization should be successful. Now, stop this record for a while.